Paper Chef here. In this Brother Scan and Cut Tips and Tricks tutorial, you are going to learn how to cut out and layer stamped images. These are pretty straightforward stamped images and a lot of fun, and there will be a pencil trick involved with the little mice, or little mouse, I should say, that's holding a pencil. Okay, so what I mean by layering is that we're going to, let me just show you an example. We're going to create little offsets. So not just in the way that we cut the stamped image out, but we're going to create not just a little white part around the stamped image, but we're going to create a bigger offset to make a layer. And that just adds more dimension to your project. So we're going to start with just doing the simple ones. We're going to do these, and then we're going to do the layers, and then we'll get to this image after that. Okay, so let's start out by stamping. Thank you for joining me. Now let's tell you some materials that you're going to need for this mischievous mice and tell you where to get it so I can clear some space here. So we have going on right now so many really cool specials. And this is one of those like double dips kind of specials that you might not even know about. You might not even know how, how easy it is to get this stamp set. And you might not have picked it if you had a big order. So one thing I tell you if you don't have a big order, if you don't have an order of $150, I always tell you to use my host code. That's on my website. Here's my website. I don't memorize my host codes and I can't keep writing them in my videos because if I write them in my videos, then my videos, like as soon as someone watches the video next month, they'll say, your code doesn't work. So I don't tell you the code right now. Just go to this website and it'll always be a current code. Okay, on the bottom of that page. Now, if you don't spend $150, you just get used, you use the host code and you get entered into my drawing. And this is definitely one of the prizes. Well, not maybe not this tomorrow's drawing, but maybe at the end of the month, this will be one of the prizes. I'm going to be getting a lot of these. Now, if you do have an order of $150, this is how you get the stamp set. So you can get it as a prize from me, I mean, if you win the drawing, or at the back of this catalog, I'm trying to find, now you don't need a catalog to shop with me, you can just shop online. Okay, on the back of this catalog, you might not have noticed this, but if it's called rewards. So when your order is $150, you get rewards, you, and it starts out with 10%. So you get 10% rewards, and you would get $15. So I'm in the US, I'm a US demonstrator. So you went to this website, you found a wish list, you got all these cool products and you spent $150. It says, pick out rewards. That's what it's gonna tell you. And one of the things you can pick out is for $12.50, see? You can pick out mis mischievous mice, mischievous, mischievous. I'm a, where is it mischief, mischievous? Mischievous. Is it four syllables or three syllables? What do you guys think? Three syllables or four syllables for that word? But anyway, mischievous mice. You can pick that out as your free item. And you're gonna still have $2.50 to spend, so you can get something on clearance. Or you can like get something for five dollars and pay the difference. So that's how you use your rewards. It's only $12.50 because it's a host reward, meet your order. Now, this is where I'm talking about double dipping. Right now we have celebration going on. So when you spend $150, you don't just get to get the free little mice cute the cute mice here. You get three free items from this book. And I've been through this book so many times that I'm just gonna flip through it real quick. But I have to get rid of it. It's taking up a lot of room on my table. But you know, for instance, you want a free pack of rainbow and sunshine and rainbows paper, a free pack of Marbleicious, simply Marbleicious, or maybe you get a hundred dollar item and then a fifty dollar item. This is free when you spend a hundred. Stamp set and paper. These are free when you spend fifty. The otters are cute. We've done stand and cut tutorials. So in other words, get three free things or a hundred dollar free thing and two one fifty dollar free thing or three fifty dollar free things. Get your mischievous mice, still spend $2.50, right? So it's a good deal. I mean, I, that's how you get that stamp set. But I also get them every single time I place a, an order. I add one of these to it because I'm using it as prizes. I love host code stamp sets. There's a couple other ones, but you see I'm glossed over them. They're not as cute to me. There's a little girl on a swing. There's a couple other cute host stamp sets. All right, so let's do this. Let's take out the, we're gonna take out the, the cheese and the balloon first. So I've already mounted them. In other tutorials, I've taught how to mount stamps, but you're going to turn it over like this, and it's a cling stamp. So you're going to mount it onto a clear block. So here's a clear block D. It's the one that, if you're, if you're going to get one, one block, it's the D. It's the one I use the most. Okay, push it on there, and now it's mounted. Okay, we're going to mount this one, this one with the balloon, on a bigger stamp mount. So this one is H, I believe, or let's see. No, F, it's E. It's not, it's, boy, I'm really off. Is it E or F? It's E, stamping block E. And I think you have to get it at an angle a little bit like this. Okay, so you're saying, well, the, the stamp pad is smaller than the image, right? That's okay. You turn it upside down and you ink it that way. 
Okay, to make sure you have good coverage, and I just re-inked this, so you see now that the tail is getting a lot of ink pulled on it. But to make sure you have good coverage, you're gonna stamp onto your paper, onto your mat first. And I do have a little extra ink on this tail, so I need to get rid of that. See, the tail has a lot of extra ink because I had, I just re-inked my, my Memento Black. So wherever that ink is pulling up from. Anyway, it should be good. We'll test it one more time. Okay, perfect, perfect. All right, so that's how you ink up a big stamp. Turn it upside down. Tap, 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 tap. Grab some white cardstock. I have to open a new pack right now. We're gonna open a big pack of basic 12 by 12 cardstock. Oh, my, my camera's fogging up. It's hot in here, I guess. All right, so here we go. This is 12 by 12. You can just use any, any white cardstock. You can use eight and a half by 11. I'm just using 12 by 12 because that's what I have. And I'm gonna put the little silicone. It's always good to put your silicone mats under something when you stamp. So let's put that under there, right? And we're gonna just flip this over and stamp. And we'll do a couple of these for good measure. We'll do two of these. Okay, good. It's pretty inked up. It's, it's, it's a little bit too much ink for me, but because I was tapping a little too much here. All right, that's good though. We're, we'll get the idea and we'll flip it over just to make room on the paper, so something like that. All right, so good. Now we have two good stamped images, and now let's do two of the other one. We're gonna do the cheese. This one's really easy to ink up. But again, it's probably bigger, let's move some of these out of the way, it's probably bigger than the stamp pad, see? It's bigger, and when it's bigger, flip it upside down and ink up your stamp that way. And then just test it on your mat. Oh, that's a good stamped image. See, there's a lot of extra ink on here, but this is what happens when you re-ink it. You sort of have to condition your stamp again, like sort of, you have to kind of get the ink to sort of go around evenly after you re-ink your stamp. Let's try to get that. Okay, that's probably better. All right, so we're gonna put this over here and we'll do a piece of cheese. Ah, oh, that came out so good. I love that one. All right, and I'm just gonna do the next one like that. Cause you can do it like that, but you just gotta remember to get, try to get good coverage. I should have enough ink on it from last time. Hold it for three seconds and we're good. Now we have all the stamped images we need for now for this part of the lesson. I'm gonna grab a baby wipe real quick because I have ink all over me and I'm gonna get it all over my machine. If you're new to my channel, stick around to the end. That's where I show you projects, practical examples of what you can make with the skills you're learning in these tutorials. And I'm gonna just guess that that was a good stamped image and it's gonna stamp so that I can wipe this off. That's what I'm guessing. So I will show you projects. All right, so now, oh, and later we're gonna ink up, we're gonna be coloring with so saffron and we, I sometimes use this to ink my sentiments. That's what I had these out for. So saffron and pool party, just a couple subtle colors. All right, let's do it now. Let's move, let's get the scan and cut. Mat's already loaded. Put the paper on the mat. Okay, I'm just putting the paper on the mat. Something's wobbly under there. Oh, I have, I have a placemat under my machine because I was trying not to, so now my machine's wonky. It better scan today. It was scanning just a minute ago really well and then I come live and we'll see what happens when you go live, you know? This is why I'm daring. I used to never go live with my scan and cut. I, I used to pre-record everything. But now I'm, go, I'm daring and I'm just hoping everything, or praying I should say, <laughs> praying everything works. Okay, so we're gonna get, you see, when you turn on your machine, we're gonna see pattern and scan and a couple more things because I know it's the time of year when I have a lot of newbies and so I do a lot of more newbie stuff this time of year. So what we're doing right now, just so you know, is we're cutting out stamped images and we're gonna layer them. The first time we cut out the image, we're not gonna cut directly right around it because I just don't like to do that. That's my personal preference. You don't have to put an offset, but I'm gonna start out with an offset around the stamped image, and then we're gonna make a bigger offset, right, to give us that layer. So that's what we're doing right now, is this process. We're gonna do it with that stamp, and we're gonna do it with this stamp. So when you turn on your machine, you're gonna see pattern and scan. It doesn't matter which model of machine you have, which part of the world, okay? Don't be silly and say, does it work on this scan and cut? Does it work on this scan and cut? Don't be silly. 
It works on every single scan and cut that ever came out of the box from the company. This is exactly what the scan and cut does. It doesn't matter which model you have. They all do what I'm showing you. Trust me, they all do this. They all scan and they all cut. So don't, please don't ask me, does it scan and cut? Okay. They all scan and cut, but do ask, if you want to know does the design and cut, do it. No, it's, if it's not called a scan and cut, it has to be called a scan and cut. I get such silly questions. Well, mine doesn't scan. They, people actually ask me this. And I'm like, well, does it have the word scan and cut in the name? No, it's called something else. Well, if it doesn't have the word scan and cut in the name, it's not going to scan and cut. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm getting on a tangent. But anyway, when you see this pattern and scan, you have to click on scan. Okay, and when we click on scan, the next, next question is asked, how do we want to scan? We're going to directly cut out these stamped images, so let's go to direct cut. Okay, we're not saving these images. We're just cutting them out directly as they are on the mat. So we're going to click on direct cut. The next thing you're going to do is, where do you want to temporarily store this data? We're going to temporarily store it on the machine. Okay, it doesn't matter. If you want to temporarily store it somewhere else, you can store it on workspace, but you have to have wire disconnected and all that. What I really love about this machine is you can do everything I'm showing you out of the box. No wireless is needed for what I'm showing you. Next thing is it wants to know, are you using a 12 by 12 scanning area? Well, no, because I just, you saw that I just put these images here. I put them up here on the top left of the mat. Okay, so no, you don't need a 12 by 12. You can actually just go with 12 by 6. 12 by 6 area. Now next it's black and white recognition mode or color. It doesn't matter if these are colored in. I don't color them first, but even if I had colored them first, you still want to select black and white recognition mode because black and white, it's so easy to see these well-defined lines around the little mice. So we're going to select black and white recognition mode, click OK, and click Start. So your settings might be a little different on a CM machine, but you can still scan and cut exactly what I'm showing you. It just might not, you might not hit it if you hit OK as many times. The little offset me and it may be in a slightly different place. And I have lots of tutorials on the scan and cut too or CM machine. So check those out on my channel too. There's over 600 videos on my channel, probably 633 I think I'm up to now. So about 400, I probably are on the scan and cut, I'm guessing. So there's plenty of other tutorials. Okay, let's click OK. And first, let's see what it did. And I want to tell you why I'm not going to cut it right now. So let's see what it did. It did a great job. It, it outlined the cheese. It outlined the balloon, but the reason I'm not going to cut it right now is this part, this, this here without, let me show you this part. This would get so weak and, and cut, and it would be like ripping if I tried to cut the balloon out the way it is now without putting an offset. It, it, it selected the line and it's only a line. So if I try to cut that, it would just get like so tiny and it would just kind of fall apart. So I, I need to put an offset on the balloon for sure, but I just like to do it as a preference on these ones as well. So I just like having an offset. So let's click, a, so you can either select, you can go like this, select your area that you want to cut out, or just leave it as the whole 12 by 6 area. And I'm going to preview, and then I'm going to, I can ignore object size if there's any stray things selected, but there's nothing stray there, because I was using a big piece of clean paper. Here's where I'm going to put the offset. I clicked OK. I'm going to, I'm going to click on this little offset button, and I'm going to put an outline distance of 0 0.04. Oops, 0 0.04. That's so that I get that little white border around my little piece of cheese and my little balloon. And it's not that big of a border, but it, it'll keep it from ripping. Okay, we're going to click OK. And we're going to click OK. And now we're going to cut. We're going to click Select. And we can draw this or cut it, but we're going to cut it. It's a line, and we're going to cut it. And it should just take a minute so then I can say hi. Or it says two minutes, but it means more than one, but less than two. And that's when I get to say hi to you when I do my tutorials. I get to say hi while it's cutting. All right. Hi, Janet. You were there before I got here. Thank you. Yeah, I wrote in my Scan and Cut user group that I was going live, and that means I was going live in a minute or two, but I had to sort of set up, clean off my table from my hot mess. But you were here before I was, so thank you. Okay, Beverly, hello. Anne from Pennsylvania. Crystal from Iowa. Oh, Jane's from Scotland. How cool is that? Sherry from North Carolina. And you're writing the number four, but I'm not sure what that's... Oh, the four syllables. Mischievous. Thank you. Okay, you answered my question. Mischievous mice instead of mischievous. Okay, cool. We were asking how many syllables it was. So Sherry told me how many syllables. Hi, from Ohio. Sheila from Ohio. And Enike, I haven't seen you in a long time. Where do the mice come from? I talked about it at the beginning of the video. Uh, in the mini catalog, it's a, sale, it's a reward item. 
Only $12.50. But of course, it'd be different in eight different countries. It's US $12.50. Hi, Carol. Okay. Oh, and now two of you asked where the mice come from. All right. When I get two questions, it means more than one of you are wondering about it. I'll just do it real quick again. Do, do, do right here in the rewards section. Somewhere. Anyway, back. I just got to find it again. I should have had it here. It's a reward item. $12.50 right here. That's where they come from. So watch the beginning of the video, and I'll get back and say hi to the rest of you. See, there's other ones, but I wasn't feeling it as much. You guys might love this one. Look, this one's only $13.50. So I shouldn't discount this, because it's probably someone else is going to say, forget the mice, I want expressions of friendship. Well, the same whole thing applies, my whole spiel about everything I said, except instead of that price, it's this price. And we could do scan and cut with that too. I'm just not feeling it. It's just not my style as much as this one's my style. But you guys know I do whimsical things. All right, so let's do this. Let's take this off, this paper, and we're going to save. I, I wasn't worried about these little pieces of cheese. If I was, I would have used these little dots. I mean, if I was, I would have used the pencil trick, but I'll be teaching you the pencil trick. So we'll get to that, but we can't get to it yet because I teach my tutorials in a certain order, and we have to do it in a certain order so that I think that way beginner. I'm trying to help the beginners right now understand some things. And where's my darn spatula that was just right here? We're going to get that. All right, so when you can't get this paper off easily because your mat is very sticky, which is usually never a problem we have with the scan and cut, but mine, I, you just use your spatula to get these little guys up. So, so far, so good. And I'm going to now take a piece of gray granite. So you want to do something for your layering. Get whatever you want. Get designer series paper. Get something else. But let's put these on gray granite, and that's what I'm going to layer them on. Why am I picking gray granite? Because that's what color... I'm coloring the mice, and I just thought, why not layer it in the color that I'm coloring the mice? But you can layer it with another thing. Don't layer it with white, because it's already white, right? So layer it with a different color. But so far, so good, right? Our mice came out good. Oops, get that one up. Using my little spatula. Be careful with that balloon handle. And by the way, it's better to stamp now the message, because when I stamped after I colored with the blends, it ran, so if I forget to tell you that later, I'm stamping my message before I color with the blends. Okay, so there's, there's what we have so far. Okay, so everybody hopefully understands what I just did, 0 0.04 offset. Now we're gonna put this piece of paper in. So the, the important thing that when before you put this paper in, let's move these away. Well, one thing is, a couple of things. You might, you might wanna remember if they're a little bit different from each other, you might wanna go, oh, did I get this one from the top or bottom? Because when you make the, outline. These are exactly the same, but if they weren't, you try to remember what part of the paper you got them from so you match them up later. That's why like this one's matched up directly with the one that I cut out the layer for. All right, so the next thing we're doing is we're putting this piece of paper on the gray granite and we're going to, let's put this little cheese up there, we're going to take the gray granite and we're going to make a layer in the background. So we're going to go like that. So see, we're doing this, right? Oh, I mean, we're not doing this. We're, we're, we're moving these away and we're cutting out the offsets, but we need to make sure that this piece of paper is in the right spot. So if my stamped images were over there, make sure you put the paper over here. Put this paper on your, on your mat, wherever you had your images. Okay, so with that said, we got the gray granite loaded, everything's fine, and now it's a very easy process of doing the next offset. I'm gonna go, we said finish cutting, you're gonna click okay, and you're gonna hit the back button. Don't erase this, don't go to home screen, don't go, don't go, Pressing a lot of buttons, just hit the back button. It's very easy what you're gonna do. While this is all right there, one little step, right there, one little step. Go into the offset again, and instead of 0 0.04, we're doing 0 0.08. That's it, 0 0.08, boom. Click OK, click OK. And now it's gonna cut, and it's gonna do its little auto blade thing again. And now I'll talk about blade depth. While I'm, we're gonna click start, I'm gonna talk about blade depth. It's gonna do the little auto blade thing where it takes it did, you know, it goes and it takes, it makes a little nick on the bot. That's why you have so many scratches on the top of your mat. It makes a nick to, to determine the blade depth. And then it goes in and determines the blade depth of the cardstock. So if you're doing this with a CM model where you don't have auto blade set up, then the first paper I showed you would have been a blade depth of four. This one is regular basic white cardstock. And this one I'm showing you is called gray granite cardstock. You need a blade depth of five for my Stampin' Up cardstock. Okay, so that's what you need for the depth of five. For designer series paper, if you're ever cutting this kind of paper, you need a blade depth of three. Okay, 
Bleed up the three. So that's how you do it. I mean, you got to set your blade, but not me, not us, because us, those of us that have an SDX-125 or an STX machine, we don't have to set blade depths. There are no numbers on this blade holder. There, there, it's an auto blade. So let me show you what I mean. There are no, there are no numbers. You don't set blade depth. It determines it automatically. Okay, auto blade. All right, I'll finish saying hi to you in a minute, but let's get these off. So pull this up, boom, pull this up. This is the gray granite. Okay, pull, put that away, put that off to the side. Now we're gonna take our little spatula and we're gonna match them up. Now we don't, like I said, if they don't match up perfectly, then you might have to figure out which one was which, but that one does match up perfectly, you know, and it's fine because they were both the same. Okay, so here we have the dimension. But of course I don't, I don't attach them yet. Let's just put them on a background so you can see. See, well, let me put them on a different background. Let's put them on this color background so you can see the dimension. This, this extra layer is going to add dimension, but I don't attach them together yet. I don't add dimensionals and put foamies behind them because what if I mess up on the coloring? Then I might not use that one. So I don't want to attach it yet and then have like a lumpy surface to color on. So let's do this. Let's get this guy and match these up. And when I say match them up, you're just kind of loosely putting them together. So when you color them later, you know which one went with what. Sometimes one of the tails was stumpy. Like I'm not sure if that one goes with that one because of the tail. See, that one might go with this one. Let's see. Try to match them up. Oh, that's a nice one. Look at that smooth tail. I think that's the one that goes on that one. Smooth, smooth sailing. Oh yeah, that's the one. This one goes, see that little, that little flat line goes next to that one. It doesn't really matter, but you know, hey, we're gonna be professional. We have a professional machine here. All right, we're gonna do the coloring in a little bit. I'd rather do like the scan and cut work and then I can move this off of my table and do the next part, right? So let's do We'll do the coloring in a little while. That way you want, you know, you want to stay for coloring, you can stay for coloring, but I, I, I want you to at least stay for all the scan and cut tutorial part. So now we're going to take the piece of basic cardstock again, and we're going to, I'm going to now teach you about how to cut out the other stamped image. So let's get the paper again. So, so far we know how to cut out and layer stamped images. The next part I'm not going to layer, I just want to cut it out to show you how to cut it out. Well, we can layer it, but... I mean, that's not the point of the next part. The point of the next part is when you get a stubborn image that won't cut out the first time, what do you do? This wasn't stubborn. It was fully connected with a black line. It's a very, very nice black line. So it wasn't a stubborn image. But now we're gonna, we have one that's stubborn. It won't cut out without a little help from us. Don't ever get mad at your machine. It's only doing what it's trained to do. It needs to have solid lines. It can't, it can't do what it's not trained to do. It's trained to find solid enclosed spaces. So let's put this on a stamping block, the little baby mice here. He's not a baby, but he's holding stamping block C. Okay, we'll put it like that. Look at that, there are gaps. Okay, see the gaps? The whiskers. In fact, I forgot about the whiskers. Even I forgot about the pencil trick. So here's what happens if you don't use my pencil trick. No whiskers. What kind of mice is it without whiskers? It looks silly, right? I even forgot the pencil trick the first time I did it in this tutorial. So look, you need to do the pencil trick. Look, you need to have whiskers. Look how silly he looks without whiskers. So if you're cutting off your whiskers, it's because you didn't, the scan and cut doesn't know. It's not the scan and cut's fault. Please stop getting mad at your scan and cut for doing exactly what it was trained to do or trained by engineers, meaning trained or like programmed to do. It's programmed to connect the lines and scan around. And if it's not connected, there's a gap there. It's going to ignore the whiskers, right? It's only doing what it's supposed to do. That's a good thing. You want your machine to do what it's supposed to do. It's you have to help it. So when it doesn't work, you got to do something about it. So we're going to stamp. So let's stamp. This time we can actually stamp right onto the... Let me get my little... It's always good to have silicone mats or like a baker's mat or something, you know, to put under here. But let's, let's stamp onto the paper and see. Oh, not yet. Not yet. I always like the first couple times I try to stamp onto here. So we're going to just go... I got enough ink now. Tap, tap, tap. Okay. Tap, tap, tap. All right, pretty good. So now we, we got our two. We always do two. I'm just doing two so that, you know, if one doesn't recognize, we can move on and not have to worry about it. So pencil trick. No trick pencil. It's, not, it's a pencil trick, but not a trick pencil. It's a number two pencil. Ticonderoga pencil. So... You just get it in an office supply store. 
and you just put lines, you're just going like this. Doop, doop, doop. You're just touching the lines of the whiskers. Just touch it onto the, in fact, you can put a big blob of, you can actually put a big blob of, of lead there. It really doesn't matter. Because we're going to erase this. Because why? The, the artist didn't intend for the whiskers to be connected. So you can do it kind of sloppy. All you're doing is making lines and connecting any little gaps you see in this little mouse. Like here's a gap. Here's a gap. There's a gap. Everywhere a gap, gap. Old MacDonald had a farm. Okay, here's a gap. Here's a gap. There's, so basically everywhere you see a gap, it's not just the whiskers, but I will tell you though, when I forgot to just do whiskers, the rest of it did cut out fine. So you probably don't even need to enclose these gaps. It, 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 they were close enough together where it didn't need a pencil trick, but still, I'm just trying to teach you like the right way of doing it in the future, which is always trying to enclose your gaps. Never try to enclose the gaps like here. We don't care about the inside gaps because all we're trying to do is cut out the outside of the image. All right, so now we'll color later. We're going to do this part. Put a boom, put the paper. Okay, put the paper on there. Oh, my, my mat's starting to get buckled here. Sometimes when your mat starts getting buckled, because you're using it a lot, instead of unloading it and loading it, sometimes you can just do what I just did. Loosen up the lever. Try to flatten out the mat so it's not so buckled. And lower the level, or click the lever again. Okay, if, you're, if your little images start slipping around, another trick, another trick, I always like to teach you a lot of tricks and tricks. If your paper starts, you know, slipping around the mat, you can use painter's tape after you scan it. But first scan it. We don't want to mess with anything while this, before it's gotten a chance to scan. All right, so let's go now home. We're going to erase everything because remember, we used direct cut. We're not saving anything we did. We're just going to go home and we're going to erase everything. Click OK to delete all patterns, yada, yada. Now we're going to go back to the scan. Scan, direct cut, same as before. Store it on the machine, 12 by 6 area, yes, 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 start. Same exact process, but now it's going to recognize this mouse, whereas before it would have left the whiskers off. So that's the only reason I'm showing you this tip and trick, because you need whiskers. And if you, forget, if it, if you do cut off your whiskers, am I getting rid of that mouse? No, of course not. I'm just going to draw the whiskers myself on this mouse. Actually, I might use a little string or something. I mean, I'm, going to, I'm, not going to, I'm still going to use that one. It's not a problem. Okay, click OK. First, select the area you want to where the mice are. And it looks like it's a bunch of separate images. That's because we don't have that outline distance. Once we put that outline distance around this, it'll be forgiving and sort of connect a lot of those gaps for us, hopefully. Put the outline distance of 0 0.04. And now we have a pretty good one, but there's, there's one there. There's something inside there. It did get in there. So this is a good teaching moment. If I go out like this and I keep going bigger, you'll see what happened here. See that? It, it actually has like a, a little problem. It got, in, it got into the inside. So one of the gaps was not enclosed enough. So I could just, it's probably better just to fix it right now while it's on the mat. Because it went in, it's not fully enclosed, and it went in there and it scanned in the inner parts and it would have made a big shredded mess. So hopefully I fixed it and if not we're just going to cut out the right one. Scan, direct cut, save it to the machine, start. Just fix it and scan again. Or I could have just scanned the right one. But there's no way I was going to cut that one on the left because it would have been a hot mess because it was cut in several pieces. Or it was recognized in several pieces. I should say not cut in several pieces. Okay, okay. Take that there. Do, 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 do. Preview. Same as before. We're not doing anything new yet. Okay, put that outline distance around it. <gasps> yes, success. See how I troubleshooted that? Okay. What I did is I troubleshooted. I, I made it one image. Here, let's see if we can't zoom in. I, like, if I edit, I could have zoomed in. But here, see that? I'm just going to hold my machine up. To, it's, it's easier than zooming in. I made it one image. Each of these one image. That's what I wanted. All right, so there you go. Click OK. And we have the, we're going to cut it with the 0 .04 outline distance. And if I need the tape, here's where I would use the tape. I wasn't going to use the tape before, but I could use the tape now to help hold the paper steady if I wanted. But I didn't want to use the tape before because it needs, the scan and cut needs these registration marks and you don't want to cover those up. But I do like to use tape just to make sure, it, you know, my, my paper doesn't wobble all around. All right, so now it's cutting that out for me. Oh boy, you guys got a lot of comments. 
You guys are liking these mice. Melissa from Georgia is saying hello. Zoma from Puerto Rico, hello, hello. Tammy from San Diego. Linda from New York. Actually, Lee, right? Okay, cool. I'm glad you love the mice too. Hussama from England. Oh, Warrington, England. There's actually a Warrington in Pennsylvania too, Salma. That's a common name of a place. Kathy from New York. Kathleen, hello. Lynn from Gloucester, England. Cool. Oh, you're in the Netherlands where it's very chilly. Aaron from Ohio. All right, Debbie's here. All right, we'll get back. There's still some more you haven't said hi to. We will. The mice took my spatula. That's funny, Aaron. Aaron said, the mice took your spatula. All right, let's see how this mouse did. Look at that. Success. And now we have to erase it, and now we'll do some coloring. Success. We need our little spatula that the mice took because they're so mischievous. So here we go. And um, I don't know. I could cut out a layer. I mean, I could, I could, but I don't want to because I don't, I'm not going to do it with this. But look, all you have to do is put a little piece of gray granite in there, right? Go back. I don't need to do that because I'm using my gray granite for something else. But let's just say that. Go back. Go, go here. Hit point oh eight, and you make your big outline. Okay? I'm not doing that again. But that's how you make your outline layer. We did the layering earlier. This point of this part was the pencil trick. All right. So now let's do some coloring. Because it's all part of my tips and tricks here. So let's get this. We're not coloring all of it, but I just want to give you tricks on how to color some of this stuff. So we're going to take out our Stampin' Blends. We need to erase this. We don't, don't use the red eraser from your... Oops, I'm already starting and They're already getting not matched up again. These, these ones, we need to erase the pencil marks. So you're going to use your white eraser. Use a white eraser. Don't use the red eraser from the end of your... Okay, from the end of your pencil, the red one, because it will. And you might be wondering, why do you have to erase it? Well, because the artist didn't put it there. There's a gap on purpose. It's part of the drawing. So you want to get back. You want your image to get back to the way the artist intended, because that's why they're an artist. We're an artist, too. Stampers are artists, too, but not like in the way, in the sense that we didn't draw this. It's not ours. And that I like to get things back to the way that they were supposed to be. All right, so that's how, I, so now the little, now there's a little gap between the whiskers. All right, so let's color the cheese first because it's the easiest thing to color. And so we're going to get out some Stampin' Blends. They're alcohol markers. When we use Memento Black Ink, it works really well with the Stampin' Blends. So that's why I like using Memento Black Ink because it doesn't run when you use Stampin' Blends. So let's take the Dark So Saffron. Dark so saffron. I'm going to use the thin side and I'm going to go around all these little circles just to keep me from going in the line. So these little circles are like the air holes, like your Swiss cheese, right? So I'm taking the dark one and I'm going around all these little circles and I'm going to outline Mr. Little Mouse over here, his little circle he's peeking out of like that. And this little circle, I don't worry about the smaller circles. I can kind of cover those in. And then you're going to take, that was the thin side because you had to do a lot like, it was thin because there's a brush side and a thin side. Now I can use the thick side because I'm not really worried about, like, this one anymore. Like, I can, just, I can just go around the outside of this with the thick side, the brush to tip. So, so saffron, to me, was the best color for the cheese. Like, I tried, I don't, I don't really have, like, markers in every kind of yellow, but, like, it didn't really look good with mango. It looked okay, Mango Melody. Not Mango Melody. What's the other one called? It was, is it? Mango, yeah, it, it was okay. And and pineapple punch is a retired color. That was a little too bright for cheese. Um, there's some other kinds you could use for cheese, but I just thought this so saffron really looks like cheese. And it's a subtle color. And so anyway, now I'm taking the light so saffron and I just got new markers, which I'm really happy they just came in. And it was cool because I needed new so saffron markers anyway. And then I wasn't even thinking about my cheese. I just needed them because they were dried out. And now I have it for my cheese, and I can cut it. I can. Oh my gosh, I was about to say I can cut a lot of cheese. <laughs> I can, you know what I mean? I can cut a lot of cheese, but not in that way of cutting cheese. I can cut them out of my scan and cut. 
Well, you know what? I should have just, you know what? That would have been a better title for this video. Cut the cheese. I need, I need, to, I need to do something with that play on words. Cut the cheese because we just cut out scan and cut cheese with the scan and cut. All right, so there we go. So that's, that's how easy it is to do your, your um, so saffron. You got the dark around the edges and the light. I just did circular motions for the light ones. And if you wanted to have some more, you know, then you could go back around and do some darker borders if you wanted. But I think it's fine. I mean, you could just do another little edge here. Little dimension. Okay, so now you're going to get your... I tried, I tried Smoky Slate and I ended up liking Gray Granite for my mouse better. So I'm going to use Gray Granite. Again, the same concept where you do the dark first. So go around Mr. Mouse here. Just do the dark part. His little hands can be dark. His little... I wasn't sure if that was the gap for his circles. Like, I wasn't sure if that was his head. So I, the first couple times I colored in those gaps, but it, I think it's part of, like, the circle he's trying to he's trying to stick his head out of. So you just kind of be careful where you, if you color in the whole circle. It doesn't matter. It still looks good. I'm, I'm doing the tail dark, and I'm just doing the outside of the head dark. And now I'm going to take the light gray granite, the brush side, and just sort of go in there. But because I have a lot of ink on this one, it sort of made... For some reason, even though it's the light one, it came out sort of darker than my other one. So then what I did is I took the color lifter and I just lifted some ink off of his head here with the color lifter. This is, when it dries, it sort of lifts a little bit of color from the head. And then I did a little dot of pool party for the eye. And that's the easiest thing to color. So now I like to take the Winkostella. Oh, wait, before I do Winkostella, let's start. Let's do this part. Let's, let's stamp the sentiment in here for these because it needs to dry. Last time I, I made my sentiment run. All right, memento black. Let's do a sentiment. Uh, we'll do a birthday. It's your birthday inside the balloon, okay? It's your birthday with the stamping block B. Tap, tap, tap. Say it's your birthday. Happy birthday to ya. Okay, so I'm just trying to tap in down there to make sure I get a good stamped image. And now I'm going to just stamp, it's your birthday. Okay, so that's better. And I'll do a different one on here. But I wanted to do that and let it dry a little because my... Let's see, just a quick note to say. That one fits in there. Tap, tap, tap. Okay, just a quick note to say. These are my little thank you mice. Okay, so that's good. Got that. So that's the sentiment. All right, back to this, back to this one. I was gonna do Wink Estella, but I wanted to give that a chance to dry. So at the end of your coloring, let's, let's close this, you wanna use Wink Estella all over it, and then you get that little shiny, glittery, you know, glittery part all over it. Wink Estella is the best thing ever. I probably go through one of these a week, and then you can stretch it. I've done a bunch of videos on how to stretch this out. You can add alcohol to it and stretch it out, and then you can Add some your re-inker re to your Winkostella and color the color the leftover glitter. So then you have glitter pens in different colors. So that's always fun. All right, so that's that's how to glitter it. So that's good. That one's done. And now we're gonna now we're gonna use dimensionals to attach it. But we we colored it first. I'm just trying to use up the leftover. I have dimensionals, but it's kind of better to use up the leftover sometimes. It does run through because I used regular basic white. I'm just using pieces of the edges of my dimensionals. When you use basic white, it runs through. If you use thick basic white, it doesn't run through. But it doesn't matter if it runs through because we are layering this. Let's put on my glasses and get this kind of straight. So now we have this cute little layered dimensional. Okay, and what I thought about, and I'm, the projects I'm showing you don't have this on it, but I grabbed my trinkets right before this video and I said, I need to grab my trinkets and I need to see if we could possibly, you know, I didn't do it, but I was thinking we could put like a, a wobble spring on there. But I didn't get to it, so we're not going to put a wobble spring, but it would be so fun to make this wobble with a little wobble spring. All right, now let's do this mice, mouse, okay? And I just want to do the balloon now that we have these. We'll do one in pool party and one in petal pink. So the reason I'm using pool party and petal pink, I'm going to do the, the, uh, the thank you note will do petal pink, and the birthday will, I mean, this one will do petal pink. The thank you note will do pet, uh, pool party. The reason I'm using pool party and petal pink is because they're subtles. 
and subtles. Remember I told you that the so saffron's a subtle? When you have color, we have color families, right? We have color families, and one of them is subtles. I know that petal pink goes with so saffron. I know that I'm going to use now the light, the light pool party. I'm just going to go in there. I'm going to be careful around the sentiment itself. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not careful yet because first I'm trying to blend the light and the dark with the circular motion. Okay. Now I'm going to be a little bit more careful because I don't want that to run because oh, I got it to run when I stamped after the alcohol. So anyway, back to the colors. I'm using this other paper, which we'll get to, and it is called, ha, ah, it didn't run. I'm so happy. See, so st stamp your sentiment before you color, and then your sentiment won't run, like it, like it won't, the ink won't run. And so petal pink and pool party go with so saffron, and they go with this paper that I'm going to be showing you. I'm using dark petal pink. The paper is Pattern Party Designer Series paper. It's another host, it's a host paper, but it's in the annual catalog as opposed to the Mischievous Mice, which is in the the mini catalog. Okay, a little bit dark one. And now I'm going to take the light petal pink. Again, circular motions, blend the light and the dark. Okay, I'm just blending it so there's no big harsh lines. And then I'm going to get a little careful around the sentiment. But once I got all the little side blended, then I can do 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 and color in. Okay, for your birthday. And then you already know how to color the mouse. I don't need to show you how to color the mouse again because we're going to use that gray granite. I mean, we could do one mice. I mean, it's just the same. Well, no, we won't. We won't. It's just dark gray granite on the outside and light gray granite. Okay, let's do the pencil because we'll, that's something new. We'll do the pencil. Okay, so you know how to color that. Pool, par pool party, petal pink, um, so saffron. Now let's bring in a couple more colors. This is going to be... Gray granite again, but this time I just used these these some of the neutral colors. So I used my dark crumb cake for the pencil. So there's a couple lines on your pencil. So you go like this. And always kind of do your little pencil first because it's so intricate that it's better to do your pencil first. Okay, I just did the two lines in crumb cake. And then I took the light crumb cake. That was dark crumb cake. And I went down the middle with the light crumb cake like that. And remember, we have the still the gray granite mouse. We're going to take pool part, I mean, petal pink, petal pink, and we're going to make the eraser in petal pink. We could use flirty flamingo or something pink for the eraser. And then I did ivory for the top. So this is ivory. Uh, should be ivory, okay. The top of the pencil, just that really light ivory because it looks like a pencil. Okay, and then you got the gray granite and the little little blue eyes. So you blue eyes here. Blue eyes, baby Scott. Blue eyes. And then maybe a little bit of whatever you want to do for this little lines on your pencil. You could do gray again. But since we're using gray for the... I would normally use gray, but we, we're using gray. So I, did, I couldn't use gray for the back of the pencil because the, the mouse is gray. Okay, so that's how to color the mouse. So now you know how to cut layer and color. So now you want to see the projects? Let's make a little room. We'll show you the projects. Okay, so this is one of my first project I want to show you is the one that I told you ran a little bit because what I did is I colored the, the balloon and then what happened is I stamped onto the balloon after I colored it. So I don't recommend that. You should stamp before you color because look, Right? It doesn't run. Okay, and I layered it, layered it up with dimensionals. Wink of Stella. See the little the little Wink of Stella on the mouse? And I used the Pattern Party Designer Series paper. I'm going to show you that Pattern Party. It's a really cool pack of like 48 sheets of Pattern Party. And in the middle, I, I mean for this card itself, I used a Pool Party card base. Because Pool Party is one of the colors in the Pattern Party. Here's what the piece... Or the pack, I should say the piece in the pack looks like. I'm not going to open these all up right now, but like, see, look, Pattern Party is just amazing. See, there's a black and white side. This is actually, this one's not Pattern Party. That's something else. This one's snuck in there. This was a celebration paper that's retired now. 
I'm putting that in my rainbow kit. That's why I have it out, because I'm giving it to my crafty friends. All right, see? This is Pattern Party. So you can do a lot with Pattern Party. And there's, the, on one side is black and white, and on the other side is, is colored. And so that's, how, that's what I did for this. That's in the back of the annual catalog. All right, so a couple more things about this card before I move on to the next project is, there's a couple more things about it. This little heart is from my bucket of crafty goodness. I tell you, always have a bucket of crafty goodness for every little sweet that's going on right now. And here's my little bucket of crafty goodness from my, what's going on with the, you know, the Valentine's it's called Sweet Talk. So I have lots of little Sweet Talk stuff and I just pulled out a heart and stuck a heart on there from my bucket. It's actually a coconut. It's a coconut bowl. That's my bucket of crafty goodness. And I'm even starting to like make all my sentiments because I'm working on Valentine's projects. But anyway, that's, that's what you're, I got the heart from. And another thing is that I ink this up with my blends. And that's what I wanted to show you. So just like, say you have a little, a little bit of a, you know, this, this blending brush. And I was doing a little bit of that with the, with the sentiment. I'll show you that again in a minute. I'm not going to show you how I did it. I'm just going to point that out in a minute. Because this part here. I just want to point out how I did that part. All right. Lastly, on my YouTube channel, I have a lot of different things going on. And one of the things is a series called Ink It Up. And in the Ink It Up series, I, one of the videos in the Ink It Up series is called How to Color Embossing Folders. And in that video, I showed you how to take the, this is the Tasteful Textiles Embossing Folder, and I showed you how to color it with Pool Party ink. Well, I had a bunch of those fun things already colored, and I used them on this card. So this is an embossing folder colored tone on tone. That's what it's called, tone on tone. Meaning you're using the same tone on the same tone. Okay. Next project is, give someone a bag of Cheetos, right? Made with real cheese. Isn't that funny? Sure, it's made with real cheese. But anyway, it's made with cheese powder. It's probably made with real cheese. But you can just say, say cheese, and give someone a bag of Cheetos. Put that on your coworker's desk. That would be fun, right? Okay. Now I'm going to show you the next one. So that's a project. And I was thinking of the wobble spring, but I, I didn't, I grabbed my trinket container and I, I couldn't find the wobble spring, but I wanted to make that wobble too. That would be fun. Okay, the next project is, oh, and by the way, this is Pattern Party, a 12-inch strip of Pattern Party. You just stick it on there, and that's it. All right, next part, next project is a card using that same text, tasteful textiles 3D embossing folder, a piece of Pattern Party designer series paper, a little banner that I cut that says, say cheese, and it says, hi, sweet friend. And my niece and her friends, they love cheese. They go crazy over cheese. So I think that's going to be a fun, a fun little card to, to send them or something similar. And for what you do for this little banner is you just take some So Saffron. It, you just take some So Saffron and you color in the little banner so that this banner is a little different from that banner. They kind of, if you, if you leave them both white, then they, they don't contrast with each other. Then I did for the pool party, I just inked up the edges with the pool party, the little Say Cheese banner. Okay, and then in the inside of the card, I just put in a little piece of design series paper. So you have a little note card. Okay, and lastly, and you know I have a lot of crafty goodness so I can keep on doing this. This is my favorite card, is I, I created one with kind of using all the techniques in one, um, I, all those coloring techniques. So I have It's Your Birthday with the, with the petal pink, and I have the So Saffron going on, and I got the inking up the edges, and I got designer series paper going on with the pattern party. And then I have the So Saffron that I took a piece of basic white as the layer back here because it's a basic black. This is a black card. This was a, by the way, that was a gray granite card. Gray granite, pool party, and So Saffron. This one is a black card with a, with, it's just black, but this piece of designer series paper is pattern party. And so all I did was take the piece of white paper behind here, this extra quarter inch layer, and I just put pool party on one side of it, made it two tones. So I put pool party on the side, on the edges, and then I put so saffron on the side over here because I, I wanted to put like the yellow, the yellowish to go. I didn't want to put the yellow on that side because the cheese was on that side. There was already so much yellow on this side of the card. So I put the yellow over on that side of the card. So this is my favorite card because even though I didn't layer these little mice because I made this before I layered the mice. See, this you can see how the mice are layered here with the extra piece of gray granite. It was just the most fun I had coloring with that card. So those are my four projects to show you. And then I have loads and loads of cheese. And I think you could do something with the play on say cheese and you could do something with photos. You know, you could have something where the little mice are sticking out of different holes and you could, I'm thinking maybe I could cut this off, the little string, and use another one where he's poking out the holes and you say say cheese, 
like poking out the holes of the maybe the picture perfect eyes. I don't know. I have lots of ideas for the for these um these little critters. Okay, let me say hi to the rest of you and just tell you one more time where to find this because it seems like I'm getting asked all over the place. How do you find this? How did you guys miss this mischievous mice? Well, I know I missed it when the first time around. I didn't get this on my first order. I, I forgot to get this, or I don't know why I didn't get it. Okay, does it cut through the adhesive sheets as well? Yes, this cuts through the adhesive sheets. You could have made stickers out of this. And I have a lot of tutorials on my channel about how to make stickers, but the reason I didn't make stickers is because I was just, you know, stamping, and then, like, I would have used up a lot of adhesive, and the reason I didn't want to put adhesive behind here was because I can still use this part for die cutting, and this part, and this part. I didn't want to use a big giant adhesive sheet, but if I was just doing a bunch of little intricate dies with the metal machine, you know, with the stamp and cut and emboss machine, then I use adhesive. Like you've seen me use it on my butterflies and on my more intricate dies because I don't feel like putting glue on it. These I'm not using glue, I'm using dimensional. So that's why I didn't use the adhesive sheets. But of course, okay, you can. Now Jean, in my, so Jean wants a catalog and if you're in the US, you just go to this, this website. And you just click on contact me and then you give me your address and I can send you the mini catalog. Okay, so that's what you're asking about. And I've already lost it. It was sitting right here. I will send you this one too. This one's good till February 28th or while supplies last. These are the items. So go to paperchef.stampinup.net. I did have a catalog at the start of this video. Here we go. Got to show you the mice again. So while I'm talking. So there it is on page... 90, but you don't need a catalog to shop with me. You can just go to my website and shop. Yep. Thank you. You guys are answering each other's questions. That's great. Diana and Nikkei answering. Yes, adhesive sheets. We talked. Okay. Well, good. I've been trying to try this set on my scan and cut. Yes. You don't need the new one. Oz Paul's. No, you can do this with your original scan and cut. If you are just cutting stamped images, your, your older machines are probably going to work better than some of the newer machines. Because what happens is the newer machines have a higher resolution and they're very much more sensitive. And if you're cutting things that are stamped images with black lines, I'm, kind, I'm sometimes getting better results on my older machine. It just depends. If you're trying to cut pattern paper and stamped images, I like the older machines. If you're trying to do a lot of intricate work and vinyl work, I mean, this is way better because of the auto blade. You want to use this kind of scan and cut because of the auto blade and it has the, you know, the automatic sensor and the automatic pressure. All right, so all that. Okay, so I'm ready to go. Hi, Laurie. Thank you, Denise. And hello, Barbara. Thank you, Selma. Linda Lee. All right, thank you guys for watching. See you real soon. This is where you find this mischievous mice. Hope you shop with me and get this one for free. It will be also in my prize drawing next. That's all for now. This is The Papered Chef.